What types of questions and options are available when you create a form in Microsoft Forms? Let's look at how to easily create complex or multiple part forms or surveys in Microsoft Forms. To start, log into your Microsoft 365 account and then launch Microsoft Forms from your Microsoft 365 app launcher or from your browser, type forms.microsoft.com. This video is part of a series on Microsoft Forms. To learn how to get started with Forms, click the link above or look in the description below for links to the videos in this series. Let's explore a sample form. So here we have a number of different form fields. For instance, this is what we call an NPS or a Net Performer Score field. And this is where we can choose options on a scale. And here is a Likert scale. And that's just basically a fancy name for a table with rows and columns. Our simplest field is a choice field. And this is where you may allow only one option or multiple choices. But for this particular one, it's a drop down. And here we have multiple choices for locations in the United States. Or you might add a date picker. This is where the respondents is going to choose from a calendar to be able to select the date for this question. Notice how this form is split into sections. Here I'm in section two. Tell us about your training experience. At the start is section one on software skills and usage. This gives us the ability to create a multiple screen or multiple page form. So it's not so overwhelming for our respondent and it's easy for them to move to the next section. It could be used to divide up the different types of questions or simply provide a little bit of a break in the survey process. Section two then includes a rating scale. Now the default is one to five, but you could choose stars or numbers and change the scale. Here we have another net promoter score or scale and then a text field, which you can set up to allow for longer answers. Optionally, each of these can be set up to be required, and then many forms will also have suggested possibility. So these are created from artificial intelligence based upon the words in this form, and you could easily add these to the form. And of course, all of these questions can be moved up and down within the form so you can manage the flow in the best way possible. So let's get started hands-on building this form. At the top, first I'll choose new form, add my title and a description. And notice how potential questions are already starting to be offered here as recommended options just based upon the use of the word training. here. For my first question is to ask the respondent to kind of rank or rate their current Excel skills. And for that, I'll go to the drop down here with more question types. And here we have net promoter score. And we have a standard example here with the scale. Let's change that question. Instead of not at all likely to extremely likely, this will be beginner and Excel superstar. I'd like that to be a required question. And many of these questions will also have more options or the three dots. Now we won't dig into this right now, but one of the options for a question is something called branching. And so this means that depending upon the answer to a question, that might skip certain questions or move them directly to another part of the form. We'll just try to keep this a little bit more straightforward right now. For this question, I could add a graphic of some sort or media. And that's also true at the top here with the title. So let's say that I like to add an image here. Here I'll move to a location on my computer and bring in the Excel logo. So although these are great suggestions for right now, I'll close them, but I could even add them all in or one at a time. Let's add another question. This will be a choice. And I'm going to limit the options only to locations in the United States but I don't wanna to have to type in every single state. So what's the solution? Well, first of all, we'll come over to the more options or the settings for this. And I'd like this to be a dropdown. This will change the way the choices are presented. Instead of having them all on the screen initially, which would be a lot with 50 states, clicking on the dropdown will display the options. How do we populate this dropdown? Here I have an Excel file with all the US state names. I'll start at this. First one, shift, control down, just to select it, select it any way you want. It might be another list, but even with a, 
a much shorter group of options, it can be a lot easier to populate from an existing list. Copy, Control C, or use other copy commands. Now I'm back at my form, click into option one, and Control V to paste. Once again, I could use a shortcut menu for that. And here I have all of those potential answers. What I want to do, though, is have this first one back in the first position. So I'm going to click on it, drag it up, and now we've got the correct order here. And I'll add new. The next question is, when do they take this training? For this, I'll click on date, and I'll leave this as optional. Let's add another one. This is where we'll add that Likert scale. Notice because of the phrasing of the question, that Microsoft Forms is automatically offering me some different suggestions. We'll go ahead and add them all in, even though seasonal might apply for some people. We're going to delete that in just a moment. So I'll add all and then move to seasonal. And here is my trash can to delete it. So this is what I'd like to provide as options. And I'll add some different Microsoft apps here so that we can get a better sense of our population and where their greatest interests might be. I've added each of the topics or applications here as statements. I could continue adding other statements, but look, this looks good. I'll click away. And now I realize I'd like to have this be a little bit further. Up. So we'll just drag this. and put it in the second position. I think this form will work better if it has multiple sections. That is just to break up the flow of these questions and you know, organize them into particular categories. So here I'll add new, and in the drop down, choose section. And for this, section two, I'll add the title, and I'll also add a subtitle. Although we collapsed those question suggestions earlier, we can always get back to them with this little lightning bolt. And that will show us the questions and expand some of our options. As we did before, I'll collapse this right now. By adding this section in this location, it also automatically flagged in the previous questions as section one. So let's expand on that. Now I've completed the title and the subtitle for section one. I also have my section two. Let's return to section two to complete our questions. Here I'll add new, and this time I'd like to use a rating question. Here I want to know how satisfied they are with the training. Once again, as with other questions, I can always add an image to go along with that. How many levels do you want? You can pick your various options here, we'll keep it at five. And you can see that it doesn't have to be a star. There's a lot of other possibilities here just to have that visual. The star works just fine for this particular one. Here we're going to add another one and I'll go back to my question suggestions. That is, I wanna know how likely are you to recommend this training or workshop to a friend or colleague? That looks like one that I'd like to ask. And I could select other ones here and notice the option add selected. So this could do most of the form for you by just looking at these suggestions. So it goes back to looking at the content within the form to offer the best suggestions. So this question was added as a choice question. The other option, which is what we saw earlier, could be a net promoter score or NPS. That would be another option as we did here. But we'll keep that as a choice. And then finally, let's add one more question. This will be a text just to find out what they'd like to see in the future. And here I want to give them the room to provide a long answer. So that's looking pretty good. The best way for me to be able to test this out and just see if it's going to work is to go to preview. So now I can see, first of all, the heading. And now we see those sections. And notice, even though it's in section one in my layout, it's just showing this as kind of a heading for this. I can have multiple sections. 
Here's that drop down. So I won't be seeing all the states unless I click on it. And we click next, it takes us to our next section, but one of these was required. So let's go back to this, even though it was a preview. Here, I'll go ahead and answer that required question. Let's see what happens next. There we go. So this is section two, and it continues the idea here. This is all under the preview, and we get a chance to kind of make sure that check our spelling and the layout. Are there questions that we'd like to move up and down? Do I want to submit it at this point? It's just for tests, but we could go back, for instance, or view it under mobile. That's always handy as well. We'll choose back. Here, Forms is telling me that we could enable an option to allow respondents to edit their responses. At this point, though, I'm just going to close that. That's available to us in settings, which we'll look at here as we continue. We've got a couple other things that we might want to do with this form, and one is the style. In the style, you can select from a number of AI-generated styles to apply to this form. Right now, I've just added that image that had the Excel logo, and that might be all I need here. But you can see that there's a lot of other possibilities. Another option is to pick a color that might better match this, maybe a brand color that's used in your organization. And I'll do that related to Excel. So here, I'll put in a custom color, and this will take us a little closer to the color green that matches for Excel. That looks good. And now that's available here, I'll select it. So I may not actually make any other changes, but notice how that also impacted these AI generated themes. So I could certainly move to those if I wanted to. Otherwise, we can just simply close this. And here we have a little bit more color compatible online form. So that's another option for us. Before we share this, I'll move to my settings, which is the three dots and settings. So who's allowed to fill out this form? It might be only someone that's in this organization or anyone can respond. So it might be someone that I'm sharing, maybe all the participants in a particular class, they might get this via email, for instance. There might also be some timeframes for this. Perhaps I want to have this due by, let's say, June 1st. And for longer forms, it can be helpful to have a progress bar. Now, this is still pretty short, but you probably have that experience where you're filling something online and it seems like this is taking forever. That is, do I even want to complete this? So this can be helpful. And we'll customize the thank you because this is a pretty generic, kind of not very friendly. So add your own custom thank you message, if that makes sense. And here is that question I was asked about earlier. Allow respondents to edit their responses and then decide what level of notification I want as people are filling this out. So that's another option here. And we'll close the settings just by clicking on those three dots. And finally, we're ready to collect responses. I decided earlier that anyone can respond. And now it's deciding what the best way to share this information. There's one option is to generate code, which could be put into, for instance, a website, or create a QR code that might be displayed, for instance, in a meeting or on screen. We could create an invitation, and this is something that could be sent directly then to a group of people. You could put in email, you could have a group, and, and this might make a lot of sense internally. For this, I'll create a link and I'll shorten the URL for this as well. Now I can copy the link and insert it into an email to send to the participants in these training classes. So now we've sent out our form, we've gotten some responses back. Let's look at those responses. Here I have that earlier example and I have four responses. I could click on this or click directly on the form. Either way, it takes me into that form. And here are my responses. From here, you can view graphically the results of this survey or form that you've sent out. You might recall that that first question was a net promoter score. 
It's great for being able to pick from a scale, let's say from one to 10. The only problem is that this visual doesn't really help us because the NPS has other uses that really don't match what we were looking for here. Now, if I wanted to know more about this though, I could go to more details. And that means that I can look at what might be more helpful, not the categories, but the score. And this will tell me what people answered on that scale. As we continue further, though, we can see then where the emphasis is, the usage of these different applications, and maybe some potential here. Perhaps we might offer some OneNote training because it's not currently being used very much, and that might be a helpful option. And then where are they located? Once again, we could view all of these or go to more details, and we would see the specific answers here and then review the other responses. Fortunately, they were really, really happy. <laughs> it all gave us a five. Once again, your NPS, but if you go to more details, then you would be able to see where that falls on the scale with 10 being the best answer. And then finally, our text question to find out what other offerings they might be looking for. In addition to more details, you also could view that information here in the summary which is actually provided in an Excel file. Let's look at that. Now, should there be additional responses coming in, they will synchronize to these results. But here I can see a little bit more information. I can see it all at a glance in terms of the different products, or I could dig into those specifically. And then here we have our text. All those answers are provided to us also in this worksheet that we might further analyze, especially if we have hundreds of responses and we want to see them in a pivot table or want to see them with a chart. So lots of flexibility in terms of how you might use this information. Which of these questions will be most useful to you when you create your next survey or form in Microsoft Forms? To learn more ways to be productive with Microsoft Forms or to join my free tips newsletter, visit thesoftwarepro.com slash forms if this training was helpful, please subscribe to this channel for other time-saving software tips. Thanks for watching.